Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. You guys have seen that I've, I've gone around and I've filmed many 3D scanners and there's lots of 3D printers here, but I found some smaller ones than usual. And uh, these ones here, they, they got everything laid out in a perfect little uh, scenario here so I can film it nice and easily. It's quiet over here in the corner. So let's go ahead and take a walk through 3D printer material. What's the technology? How does it happen? Why do you need it? And uh, let's see what you can do with these 3D printers. All right, guys, I'm here at the EPAX dental booth. And you can see that it's nice and quiet over here. It's very cool. And, and I really like their display. So um, you have a little booth like this and you have to make the most of your space. And they were able to kill it. They got a smaller model, which is the DX1 Pro. And then you have this one here is what the the DX10 8K Pro. Okay, so when you hear the 8K and the 4K, that's actually the the printing resolution. And what they're talking about is the resolution of the the laser head. And what it's going to affect is the uh, consistency and the smoothness of your print job. And uh, the inconsistencies are called striations. That's that's the edges that go between layers. So uh, starting over here with the DX1, uh, I can see it looks like you could do three different molds at once. Four. You could do four at once. Yeah, okay. On how you on the layout. Okay, excellent. And it's interesting. So what you do is you take the 3D scan and then you import it. And I can see down here we have a little USB stick. And, and can they also connect this guy to a computer? Yeah, you, you can use uh, Ethernet, and right now we're working on a prototype to include Wi-Fi. Okay. So these are resin printers, and, and can you just walk us through uh, what a resin technology is yes. and, and why this type of 3D printer is ideal? Yeah, so these uh, are LCD technology printers, and what's different about this technology is it uses a uniform light array okay. underneath the screen of the printer, and what's, what it's going to do is it's going to shine this light through the screen, and it's going to darken individual pixels that aren't necessary, and the remaining pixels that are open will allow for a drawing of the cross-section of each layer of the print itself. Okay. And so then it's going to print layer by layer from a liquid reservoir in the tank and it's going to cure each of those layers one at a time in order to form the full model itself. So that's why you can take multiple models and put them on one platform and do it all at once because you know you're, you are dealing with the entire workspace. That's very cool. So now why would you use one of these kind of devices? I mean what are what is the user going to do with the print when they're done with it? Uh, what are they going to do with like a their next steps? Yes. Or, so next after they're done printing the model, they're going to want to either remove it from the build plate or you can put it into this machine right here where, here, let me get this out for you so we can look at it. Is that like a water bath? It's an IPA bath. You could use water bath as well if you're using some of the, some of the, uh, what's it, the water-based resins. Okay. And so in here, you just open it up and you can place the platform onto, into Right here, you see the mesh. It's going to yep. be able to hold the, the build plate right in there, and then you can close it back up with the models still on the build plate in this container right here. And you can place it in here and hit start, and it'll start uh, cleaning okay. the actual models themselves. Or you can place it just like how we've done here, where you take them off and you put them in there. Right. Then once you're done with that, you would take out the models, remove them, and you're going to want to dry them. All right. And after that, you would put it into this cure machine right here. And this cure machine kind of works similar to like a microwave, but just with UV light. Oh, and it's okay. going to rotate the models around and reflect it from all angles. That way they can cure in all places and try and cure through the material to get the insides. Interesting. And it's going to do it in a little bit less than a minute, depending on some of the materials. Now, based on some other technologies that are here at the show, do they experience shrinkage from here to here? Uh, depends on the material for the most part. I know okay. that our dental model resins have a less than 2% shrinkage rate wow. for them, so we've tried to maximize the actual tolerances that are used in now, the printers. Another technology that's over there, I think they told me there's a 20% shrinkage rate. So, yeah, 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 I know. That's what they, uh, that's serious. So, with 20% shrinkage, they actually overscale by a certain percent so that it shrinks down to the exact same size that they're looking for. Which, I mean, that seems like to me a band aid, but. I, I was fascinated. Oh, look at this. Oh, one layer. You can see it's doing one layer. Yeah, this is the bottom layer. So we let it right. do a little bit right. longer. Yeah. 
that's what they're doing. Very cool. Now, 3D printers traditionally have been very expensive, and I'm glad to see that here's a promotional rate for the show, but that's actually a very reasonable price for a small singular practice, uh, 1600 bucks. I mean, these type of resin printers used to be four or $5,000 plus. Still are. <laughs> Look at that resolution. So um, this here is off the 4K unit, right? Yes. And the crazy thing is, guys, the camera is no way gonna pick up the resolution of that. <laughs> it's so intricate. Very cool. What a cool tech, guys. I'm, I'm really glad that I was able to stop by and walk my viewers through the 3D printing process and some of the new techs. And you notice some of the other materials that I, I just did a close up on. So it's not all a rigid material. Some of it's very yeah. flexible, actually. The, this is a material used for gingiva masks yep. right here. So it's yep. kind of like rubber, has very low plastic, has very low plastic deformation. Right. So it allows it to bend a lot. And you just change out the resin based on what you're trying to work yes. with, right? Interesting. Well, that's so cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. That's the Epax Dental, Epax 3D printing system. So cool, guys. Anyway, if you want more information on this kind of technology, go ahead and look in the description down below. I'm gonna leave their website and some of their other information down there so you can maybe do some more research on your own. Thanks for watching, guys.